And we're live! And the music is very quiet. Well, it's probably because there's no music in the main menu for Dark Souls Remastered. Oh yes, I am totally using this stream as an excuse to play, well, a game that I like. And uh, it's... Hello, Artharin. Yeah, it's the, um, it's the only um, PC release of Dark Souls that I haven't played yet. Although I have played the first Dark Souls, so this is just that, again, with prettier graphics. And you get to join me for the whole thing. Hopefully it works. Let's start by creating a new character. Ah, there we go. There's music. So, my character's name is going to be... Um, because I am completely uninspired, so... Pedro. Well... Uh, we can go with... I always like the knight. High HP. Lots of heavy armor. Big fan of that. Big fan of that. That and big honking swords. But we'll have to find one first. <laughs> Alright. Gift! Let's see. I'm gonna start with the master key just because it allows me to basically open everything, or most of everything. And uh, since, uh, you know, it's going to be a self-insert fantasy, we're gonna go with Slim. The face is... Yeah, that looks good. Hair. Anime hair, yes. Ponytail, I like the ponytail. Wild. Okay, this one is true to life, including the uh, balding down the middle. <laughs> Hello, Linux Nuru. Yeah, let's go with the uh, balding down the middle. And dark brown. There we go. Full on self insert. Okay, to start the game with this character. Yes, it is. <laughs> Ooh. In the age of ancient. It plays. I didn't actually know if the, the remastered uh, intro cutscene played. Shrouded it does. <laughs> A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire. And with fire came disparity. Heat. Hello, Shay. Always great to see that TV. <laughs> Might be having the first From crash the as soon as this cutscene ends. They came. <laughs> Just a fair warning. <laughs> and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. Because there's always someone made entirely of corpses. Hi, Japan. <laughs> The witch of Isolin and her daughters of chaos. Things did not end well for Queen, them. The Lord of Sunlight and his faithful knights. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. Daddy? <laughs> With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone scales. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. Even a sword is made of corpses. Come on. <laughs> and Seath, the scales, betrayed his own. And the dragons were no more.
Gesundheit. But soon the flames will fade and only dark will remain. Yes, that was a Nori sneezing. And um, if you follow Nori on uh, Instagram, it's mind underscore the uh, underscore corner. Uh, don't forget! Uh, don't forget to uh, wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> yes, that's the day. <laughs> okay, happy birthday from our Theron. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And a happy birthday from Tux Rabbits. And in this land, <laughs> the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. <gasps> We're imprisoned. Yeah, it is basically oblivion. We start off in jail. <laughs> No crashes yet. Give it time. I mean, if the Dark Souls uh, 3 stream that I did, or attempted to do, is anything to go by, we'll see plenty of that. <laughs> Another night has saved us. Well, he dropped the corpse that has an item on it. Holy crap! And we're in game. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so we shall pillage this corpse and we get the dungeon cell key. And one of the things I'm going to try and do for the stream, no promises, I'll probably forget about it at some point, but I'll try to get some of the item descriptions because that's how this particular game conveys story. That and I have to do something to, like, keep things going along. Right, dungeon cell key. Key to the dungeon of the undead asylum to the north. A mysterious knight, without saying a word, shoved the corpse into the cell. And on its person was this key. Yes, the corpse's person. Who was this knight? What was his purpose? There may be no answers, but one must still forge ahead. That's basically the game saying, get on with it. Oh no, this is not Morrowind. You don't have the amount of exposition that the NPCs j dump on you in Morrowind. Here, the NPCs don't even give you reliable information most of the time, so... Yeah. This universal key opens a basic lock to load the trade for thieves. But in the cursed land of the undead, most doors are better left unopened. Yes. Oh. We have our starting weapon. The hilt of this lost sword was found discarded in the Undead Asylum. Only slightly better than one's bare hands, and not recommended for extensive use. Be certain to find a replacement quickly. Big irony of this is, if you get one of these up to plus ten, um, you can actually transform it into the true sword of Artorius. A massively powerful great sword. Go figure. <laughs> yes. Shows the PS buttons because I am using a uh, DualShock 4. So, there's that. Right. Let's uh, read the message. Amazing key ahead. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, someone actually went through the trouble of coming all the way back here just to leave that. Oh, and uh, a little bit of uh, foreboding. This person died right there. <laughs> But there's nothing here that can kill us, so what happened? Camera controls are the right stick. Yeah, this is a tutorial. Attack is square. 
Well, it's square because I changed it. I... That's the control scheme I like. I don't like using R1 and R2 for attacks. Control, uh, well, not control. Square and triangle are my thing. Triangle, strong attack. There we go. Doesn't deal that much more damage because this weapon is poop. <laughs> it's poop. <laughs> Hold left plus the circle dash. Oh, hello. I almost forgot to show you. <laughs> that is an optional boss. And yes, it is literally right there, and he threw a body at the, uh, cage door? Wall? Thing? Window? Whatever. The bars. <laughs> yeah. We will be fighting one of those in not too long. <laughs> right. So this is dashing when we're wearing armor this heavy, it's not particularly fast. R3 is for target locking. There it is. It locks on target. Very good. And here's the ladder. Uh, oh yeah, this is Dark Souls 1. You can't hold down a uh, circle to climb the ladder faster. Because reasons. <laughs> yes, our Theron is for target locking. And here's the bonfire. We'll be seeing plenty of these. <laughs> and when you sit at the bonfire, of course, it's Dark Souls. Everything respawns. But you get your health back. And uh, once you have Estus... You get the Estus back, too. It does not open from this side. We'll be seeing a lot of that, too. Oh yeah, this is just... You click install, and away we go. I'm playing at uh, 2560 by 1440. I would like to tell you that... Um, you could do 144 hertz with this game. But if you look on the lower left corner of the screen, you see 60 FPS, because... This game has two uh, frame rates. 30 and 60, and if you do go anywhere beyond that, the physics start to break. Heck, the physics broke even uh, when they released the 60 FPS version on PC, so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> well, would you look at that? <laughs> we open a big ass door and we have a big ass demon. Looking down at us. <laughs> uh, crikey. Right. I will try Sekiro after I beat, I beat this one. It's, uh, yeah. I want to get through this one first. Right. So we go in and, of course, Mr. Demon Asshole jumps down and comes to us. But we run here. <laughs> Because he deals a little too much damage. Um, well, we don't deal enough damage, that's the problem. He doesn't have a whole lot of HP, but we don't deal much damage with a broken sword. So we gotta find a decent sword. <laughs> Bound by Flame was interesting. Oh. We have an archer with homing arrows. You'll see what I mean in a moment. See how that arrow turned? Yeah. <laughs> they, the game straight up cheats. <laughs> right, and I can't be fat rolling because that's not kosher around these parts. So we're going to unequip this and this. Ooh, aren't I pretty? <laughs> there we go. That's not a fat roll anymore. So let's put on the shield that we just got. And we can block, which is going to be important for not getting damaged. <laughs> hey, we got a proper weapon. There we go. 
Now we are a knight. <laughs> And this is Dark Souls. <laughs> so if you can, you yeah, backstab a fucker. <laughs> and a fog wall. A very uh, misleading one at that because, yeah, there's a. Uh... Oh, look, it's the knight person who helped us. He's just chilling. And this backstabs and. Ah, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's right. They disabled the ability to uh, backstep when you have a dialogue window open. I did it. No, you didn't. Oh, is this one of those that you could theoretically jump? I'm a try. No. <laughs> and once more. No, I think they made it so you deliberately couldn't. Mostly because that ring is very useful, so you have to come back here. Yeah. 101 minutes and bound by a flame. <laughs> Was it having crashed? <laughs> it does crash a lot, yes. Theoretically, jump that chart. Yeah, I know. Oh, and you see that uh, circular thing up there? That's the Indiana Jones moment that we can have right here. And yes, that ball will deal a lot of damage to you if you let it hit you. And then it goes down the side there, and we can talk to the knight that's just chilling. Oh, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon. Then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Yes, I will hear you out. I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. It's dangerous to go alone. An Estus <laughs> flask. An undead favorite. Estus flask. Oh, yeah. Oh, and this. Estus. And we have the, um... Now key we need well. to escape the asylum. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. And thank you. Okay. Basically, in Dark Souls, you keep talking to NPCs until they start repeating themselves. Because if you don't, you'll miss some stuff. And with our one, I can use an Estus, and you rest at the bonfire to replenish the Estus. <laughs> Estus is bestus. Oh no! Our savior has died. And this is, uh, well, one of the things I'm going to um, be doing a lot is basically parroting um, Vati Vidium because he does a lot of, um, well, he does a lot of um, Dark Souls related lore stuff. And, well, one of the bits of the lore also happens to include some cut content involving that knight. The name of that knight was supposed to be Andre of Astora. And he was going to be like your opponent. Uh, he would do the inverse of what you did uh, by the time you got to the end of the game. But yeah, no, by the time... And he still hit me. <laughs> I tried to get clever with it. Didn't work so well. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> 
How come the one at the back saw me, but the one in the front didn't? <laughs> I'm sure the NPCs will find uh, the path at some point. I hope. Uh, no. No, I guess they won't. <laughs> Cool beans. <laughs> right. You. No, there's no one else here. Cool. <laughs> Well, I was going for the backstab, but clearly, I'm out of shape. I need some more practice. <laughs> uh, right. Don't have full health, but should be enough. Into the boss arena, and we get a massive advantage. <laughs> by just dropping on its head and taking away half its health. <laughs> Delay those rolls. <laughs> because the invulnerability frames are at the start of the roll. I didn't want you to do that. I wanted you to run to the demon. <laughs> Stay on its ass. Let it do the thing. I said it's ass. Okay, cool beans. So that is the um, tutorial boss. Not a difficult one. In fact, the Dark Souls 3 one is a hell of a lot less forgiving. <laughs> uh, Udex Gundir, uh, as like the intro fight for a Dark Souls game is... Yeah, no, you better have played the other two before. Be wary of fall. Yes. We did fall right on the demon's head. And the demon had a key. And that key allows us to escape the asylum. And I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Go job, go straight ahead. See, this message here... It, it it works both ways once you're leaving and you go straight ahead and you go to the thing or when you come back here and it says okay good job go straight ahead and you go straight ahead here the ground falls and suddenly you're fighting that demon we saw behind the, the bars earlier yeah <laughs> clever bit of game design that one but I am looking around because I want to make sure I loot Everything. Soul of a Lost and Dead. Not a whole lot of souls here, but we need all we can get. Oh, and that's the um the nest of the crow. Which doesn't speak now. But yeah, if you drop certain items there and you quit out of the game and you come back, uh, there's a different item there. It's how you can get certain specific items if you didn't pick them as your uh, starting gift. Don't worry. At some point, we'll come back here and I'll expand on that. <laughs> There'll be a lot of quitting back to the main menu <laughs> during that. And uh, here we are. You get to see the pretty lovely skybox, which is very clearly a 2D texture, just uh, stretch it all around you. And a cutscene. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. It's a burp! <laughs> to leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage. I mean, we didn't leave in pilgrimage. A giant ass crow <laughs> carried us away. <laughs> Lordran. 
Oh, uh, the land of lords. Lordran. Wait a second, I think I already made that joke in one of the other two streams that I did of this game. <laughs> uh. Yeah, no, you have a... Uh, Brandon Lee in full uh, furry suit. Well, feathery as the case may be. Just taking me away. In Lordran, level up and kindle at bonfires. And here we are. Fireling Shrine. The base of operations. We get three humanities right off the bat. You're being generous, game. Uh, let's not forget to talk to uh, the crestfallen warrior. Well, what do we have here? His mouth doesn't move. A new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You would have done better to rot in the undead asylum. Sorry. Too late now. Uh, well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. Oh, hot One's damn. Above in the undead church. The other is far, far below in the ruins at the base of Light Town. Ring them both, and something happens. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> yeah. So, first bit of information. There's not a Bell of Awakening like Oscar was saying. There are two. No, not Oscar. Andre. <laughs> no, not Andre. That Andre is the smith. What am I talking about? Andre of Astora is the smith. It's Oscar of Astora that's the knight. <laughs> the stream just started and I already cocked it up. In any case, <laughs> this game is a hell of a lot nicer than Darkest Dungeon. Um, it's got 3D graphics. There's that. <laughs> right. So, our little crestfallen buddy there says there are two bells. One is up there in the Church of the Undead, and you actually heard a bell just now. That is a little bit of uh, clever design that the developers put in. Whenever a player actually rings the bell, you hear it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> And what else does he have to say? Ah, your face. You're practically hollow. No, I'm not. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, I'll go crazy. <laughs> Funny. Ooh, what? Restoring your humanity? Well, there are a few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned <laughs> and the quickest way although i never do it is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity coveting thy neighbor is only human after all <laughs> but no what are you looking ah there at? it is <laughs> don't try anything clever you might regret it and that's the one line that he doesn't end with laughter. Because he's basically telling you, don't try and pillage humanity for me. It won't end well. Hmm? What? You want to hear more? Oh, that's all we need. Another inquisitive soul. Well, listen carefully then. One of the bells is up above in the undead church. But the lift is broken. You Good times. Climb the stairs up the ruins. And access the undead burn through oh. the waterway. Up there. The other bell <laughs> back down below the undead burn. Within the plague infested blight town. But I die again before I step foot in that cesspool. Oh, we'll get into Blight Town. We'll get into Blight Town. It, 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 that's annoying. That's an annoying place. Bloody hell, what is it now? You ask too many questions. That's it? Is that the end? Mm -hmm. 
I'm not up for chatting. Yeah, that's the end. <laughs> He's not up for chatting. <laughs> cool beans. Right. So, here we are. Lord Ran, and the uh, first thing I like to do whenever I get here is to go around and loot everything. Which is just a good idea for most games. You arrive at a new place, you go look at all the things, and you loot them as best you can. You see that chest open there? That chest will close and there will be an item inside if uh, you lose an important item. And there's the crow that brought us here, just chilling. Uh, someone was very proud of themselves by landing on that particular pillar. Not really that hard to do. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We have ourselves another friend. <laughs> and there's already another player talking to him. And that bell you hear is a player that uh, rung the first bell of awakening. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thoroland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. <laughs> Petrus of Thoroland doesn't want us anywhere near him. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. Yep, he straight up gave us a copper coin to uh, keep a shush on the whole, um... No. <laughs> Don't touch me. Oh my, you again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to awake my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Why, yes. Yes, it would. Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. And we already belong to the Way of White. <laughs> Only their ultimate effectiveness Covenants in the first game work a little bit differently than the other two. And your faith. Alright, so we're already in the Covenant. We can learn the gesture of Shrug. Good times. Um, let's see. We can purchase stuff. We can purchase Seek Guidance. And... And only Seek Guidance. Oh, that's, a, that's annoying. Um, how much is... Wow, Heal is expensive. That's 4,000 souls for Heal. <laughs> I want Heal. I want Heal a lot. Uh, I'm not going to buy Seek Guidance because that's 2,000 souls and uh, it's really not that useful. And I don't have a way to cast any miracles just yet. The talisman is a bit cheaper, but I think we'll find one. Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. Yep. Still a little bit of tutorializing happening there. You need faith to cast miracles. Fair. Sounds good. And this is the broken lift. You can see that there is no lift. And it's just darkness. So what happens if we go into darkness? Ooh, there's a ground right there. <laughs> and a secret passage. <gasps> With chests. Look at all of them. <laughs> Look at them. So we loot the chests and we find, ooh, cracked red-eye orbs. These are the items that you use to invade other people's worlds. Yes. <laughs> so someone, ah, oh, there we go. Here's that talisman I was talking about. And a morning star, for a good measure. And what's in here? Six homeward bones, very important. They're basically like uh, teleportation scrolls direct to the um, bonfire. And as you can see from the blood pool down there, and those bones, yeah, the skeletons are around. And I think we're just gonna run away from the skeletons because uh, they're tough. They're very tough. And I'd rather not tango with them. Okay, one of them's decided to follow me. 
Remember when I said tough? Yeah, I can barely damage them. <laughs> Oh, that was a little too late. <laughs> yeah, I need a better weapon. Or to improve this one, but whatever the case may be. And the annoying bit about this skeleton is, even after I kill him, he's gonna come back to life. <laughs> because he seems to be a better undead than I am. <laughs> and now the other one's coming. Okay, that one didn't come back to life. Cool beans. Right on. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, no, those skeletons are there to tell you that's not the way you should be going. So don't go there. Basically. <laughs> and he's still following me. He is nothing if not persistent. I'm gonna run to the bonfire and despawn him. There we go. Okay. He has gone back to the graveyard now. Cool. So. We have investigated that particular corner. It could go up one more flight of stairs there, but before I do, I actually need to go here. Oh yeah, he's trying to suck all of my calcium. <laughs> but yeah, after I have a better weapon, I'll come back to Tango with those skeletons. Because as good as the uh, the broadsword is, it's it's not... You know, end game tier level weapon. So we went there, the lift is not there. But if we go here, there's a soul of lost undead. And. Oh, yeah, in order to get there, you need to get down from the lift. Right. I was thinking there's another place we could go, but not, not yet. So, later. And right now, I still don't have enough uh, money to buy the heal, but I am going to take that out, because I'm not going to be using a shield, and instead I'm going to equip the talisman, you know, for future. Bashing weapon, yes, it is. That's uh, also why that morning star is uh, in one of those chests. It's like, oh, maybe there was a cleric here, like Petros of Thorland. <laughs> and we have an NPC here. No response. She cannot speak. She cannot speak. We shall hear her voice yet. <laughs> I'll make sure of that. Try kicking. Well, that's that's a bit of a spoiler. But yeah. Ideally, we were supposed to be going up there to that aqueduct. That's the way forward. But since I have the master key, I'm going to go down first. Also to meet another NPC. Basically, just get uh, all of the... Um, <laughs> you just saw that player ghost disappearing down. Lifts. Lifts in Dark Souls are interesting. Um, if, let's say, the game was to have a bit of a herky-jerk right there, uh, the physics would have stalled, but the lift itself would have kept going down. So by the time the herky-jerk passed, your character would be in midair and would fall to the elevator. And usually, that herky-jerk lasts just long enough for the fall damage to kill you. <laughs> I know. I played the first Dark Souls uh, with the FX8370, and that happened to me a lot because that processor could not play a one thread wonder of a game like Dark Souls. Is there a mod for this game yet where you can replace the character's uh, voice with Link? Uh, probably. There's so many mods. 
So many mods. <laughs> Alright, I'm just uh, killing these guys because souls, and they don't really fight back much, so this door, we used a master key for it, and we're in the Valley of Drakes. This is a dangerous place for a character fresh off of the asylum. That way, it takes us directly into Blight Town. Yeah. <laughs> And up ahead, we'll find something else that's also very foreboding, and I'm going to try and not wake it up, but still get the, um... The shiny sword that, uh, it's in his grasp. You can already see... The wings. Oh, and I do have to talk about one thing. You see that off in the distance there? You can go there. You can go to that place. Everywhere that you see in the skybox once you get into Lordran, you can basically go there. That's... kind of, uh, insane. Isn't Blight Town the FPS destroyer? Yes. Yes, it was. In the, um, Xbox 360, it was horrible. You, you would guess, le you would get less than 20, um, FPS the moment you entered it there. Okay, so... One of these is the sword, the other one is the shield. And this is an undead dragon. If we attack it, it will wake up. Yeah, so I'm going to try and sneak my way to get the sword. Yes, I got the sword. It didn't wake up. If I try and get the shield, it will wake up. So, soul of a proud knight. It is a nice shield. It, uh, I think... It has a bunch of uh, resistance against fire, I believe. And someone made the jump from up there to here. Show off. And those, those are the aforementioned drakes of the valley. Yeah. <laughs> really? Even the switch couldn't do it? You know? Considering, like, it's 720p on the switch, yet think should be able to do it. Right, so I'm either going to die, or I'm going to make it past the drakes and be able to loot some stuff. Either way, let's find out. Since I have uh, no hope of winning, I'm going to take off my armor so I run a bit faster, and I can dodge better. <laughs> Not dodging well enough. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> ah, welcome to Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, 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 um... The NVIDIA GPU, it's the... Tesla... Not Tesla. Or is it Tesla? No, it's not Tesla. Um, God damn it! What are, what are the um, Nvidia SOCs called? Dang it, <laughs> Tegra! Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a Tegra M1. It's the uh, the Maxwell one. And where's ah? There it is. <laughs> I was looking for the lever to bring the elevator back up. Just because I kinda wanna get past those drakes to, well, get some items and get some stuff. And hopefully not lose those 2,000 souls. That'd be nice. <laughs> okay, this is where we're going. Right. Well, yeah, you'd think that with the switch being, um, that low resolution that it should be able to handle Blight Town. Eh, guess not. Oh yeah, and I totally um, didn't talk about New Londo ruins. These are the ruins of the city of New Londo, and they're underwater. And the ruins were filled with water because, well, uh, the kings, the four kings of the city, which had a fragment of uh, Gwyn's soul, 
Well, they uh, made contact with the Abyss. And the Abyss... Well, the Abyss is its own story. We'll get to there. Uh, we'll get to that when we get there. Right. Let's try to get our souls back and not die this time. How's that? <laughs> Still not getting that shield. Oh yes, and this is Dark Souls, so if you die and you didn't recover your souls, they're lost. And something tells me over the course of this playthrough, what I'll be doing every Tuesday, um, you know, barring a couple of intermissions here and there to talk about either a specific game or a bit of hardware that I find interesting, uh, the... Yeah, this particular playthrough will involve a lot of dying and not being able to recover my souls. Like that! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I should have just run for it. I should have just gone. <laughs> oh well, I lost the souls, so... No point in going down there. I did not dodge! <laughs> But, I did get the large soul of a nameless soldier and the soul of a proud knight. Which, if I use, give me 2,000 souls. So, <laughs> I'm gonna be using these to level up myself slightly. And that one. Mostly because I want to be able to use that sword that I picked up. The Astora Stray Sword. Yeah. I can't use it effectively with uh, my present stats because it requires 14 of faith. Which is maybe a good thing that we already have 11. <laughs> so, level up. 14 of faith. There we go. Uh, vitality. Vitality increases our HP. Um, endurance increases the equip load, which is very important, and the stamina. So I think I'm gonna bump that up to 11, and we'll confirm the reinforcement. Right. <laughs> and now, we can use the Astora Straight Sword, which was kind of the whole point of uh, that exercise. Um, Let's have a look at its description, shall we? Straight sword of an unknown knight, likely one of Astora's superiors. High quality weapon with a powerful blessing. Yes, and it does have a blessing. It deals um, 80 damage of um, physical damage and 80 of uh, holy damage. It shows there as magical because, well, this is Dark Souls 1 and they, they hadn't refined the... Uh, UI elements yet, so, yeah. The enchantment on it uh, deals 80 damage of a magical nature, so to speak. Right. We should actually put some armor on, now that we're not uh, trying to trick anyone. And... Well, I'm just gonna get invaded and immediately lose, but uh, let's uh, use humanity and look at our pretty face at le least once reverse hollowing my humanity has been restored <gasps> aren't I pretty <laughs> those lips though um, any case let me see yeah, I don't have enough. Don't have enough uh, heart souls to uh, break to so I can buy the um, the heal spell. But whatever the case may be. Oh yeah, one of the things that this sword does is when you kill a skeleton, it doesn't come back to life. Very important. Very important indeed. <laughs> right. So uh, that one in the middle there where my head is, uh, throws firebombs. So we're going to try and avoid that. The other two, they're nice. They don't throw firebombs. 
Okay, 121 damage. That's significant. <laughs> Come on. How about you? I'm going to hide here while the other one throws its bombs. Come along now. Once again, I was going for the um, backstab and the game was having none of it. Oh yeah. Ooh, that was close. That was very close. <laughs> Dodge later. <laughs> the delay your rolls. And don't kick. Because if you hit uh, forward and the attack button... Hold on. I can't do it now. There it is. Oh, someone kindled the bonfire. <laughs> Whenever someone kindles the bonfire, the last bonfire you respawn that, you get a bonus. Estus flask. Yes. <laughs> Which will be useful. I have no doubts. <laughs> and now I'm poisoned. Freaking rats, man. <laughs> well, I have 11 Estus flasks. I can survive the poison. Barely, but I can. <laughs> oh yeah, don't you just love the sound effects of poison and the water bouncing off the walls? Yeah. <laughs> this game has ways of inflicting psychological terror. This poison is annoying. This poison is annoying. I was locked on and I still missed. That is impressive. Don't dodge into them. Yeah, I need to uh, get my bearing back with this game. <laughs> okay. And you can see from that corpse there that uh, there is more to this area than it would appear. And this game does a lot of this. Just hiding entire chunks of itself away from you if you're not paying attention. However, if you're paying attention, you can spot a um, ambush about to happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that seems unfair. <laughs> it was invulnerable. <laughs> okay, what's in here? Oh, it's a way back up. Right. Before we go there, let's go investigate the other areas. This is where we dropped off. There's a door, a very hidden door here. With a corpse. A soul of a lost and dead. And someone's boarded up this particular exit. Okay. There's nothing else here. We're almost free of the poison. Almost. Not gonna let go anytime soon. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you're not invulnerable while you're still hanging. <laughs> Only when you're climbing. <laughs> Get the timing right, and we don't even take damage. Oh, cool. That particular stupid sound effect is gone. <laughs> Very good. Very good indeed. Right. Ah, 
up the ladder. And no, not let it. Not gonna let us go there. I guess that's our way back. And what's this guy holding? Humanity. Oh, the huge manatees. I too believe that was a joke that was already made. <laughs> Alright, those uh, steps are broken, so we can't get up there. We actually need to get all the way to the roof, because no, we cannot make that jump. I tried. <laughs> it certainly makes the game a lot more closed, doesn't it? A lot more oppressive. Yeah, no, can't go there. And if we go up here... There's a fucking dragon! Ah! <laughs> oh, good times. Thanks, Dark Souls. <laughs> and we see the ladder as to where we can get to the roof. Which we shall go there to. There's someone running at me. Yes. <laughs> Delay the rolls just like that. Like, just before the uh, attack was supposed to hit you. Let's not get hit by the uh, crossbowman up on the tower there. I attacked too soon. Yes. Hi. Come on. Is he coming? Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's just being slow about it. Come on. Oh, that, that. <laughs> that is straight up cheating. <laughs> cool. Give me that shield. I'm not going to use it, but it's nice to have. What am I doing? Why was I going here? You die. <laughs> oh. I can summon a dragon person. Why did he decide to come all the way back just to leave the sign here? I do not know. But he did. <laughs> Alright. We still have three Estus flasks, so I'm not going to... I'm going to light the bonfire, but not sit down on it. And, uh... We need to kick down that ladder so we can climb it and since I don't want to uh, summon the dragon person just yet let's go here because this is another example of the game straight up hiding entire chunks of itself all right come on so slow hiding behind that shield <laughs> come on you can do it. Yes, go ahead and attack that. That's fine. He's trying to go around me. He's trying to be clever about it. That wasn't particularly clever of him, but yes. <laughs> How about you? Do you want to do that same dance? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> So, here we are. Atop a roof, there's some crates. We can roll into them and destroy them. There doesn't seem to be anything. Unless you read this message. Merchant, ahead. Oh. Oh, look at that. There's some stairs here. <laughs> and the game physics, despite the improved engine, are still poop. Complete poop. Come on, buddy. I know you're there. You've got an axe. I have a sword. <laughs> and here's the merchant. Try attacking. Let's not do that. Try amazing weapon. D don't kill the merchant. Well, now. 
You seem to have your wits about you. Mm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had to. <laughs> right, so, first thing we want to buy. This thing, the Orange Gaiden Soapstone. You can basically drop it down and have people summon you into their world. Which is very helpful, because if you help them beat a boss, you get your huge manatees back. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, while we're here... The Dried Finger I don't want. Lloyd's Talisman I already have a few. Should be enough. Firebomb, I will probably end up buying them so I can kill that undead dragon without taking that much damage. The repair powder is a bit pointless. The resident key is very important. Very important indeed. The repair box is also important because weapon degradation in the first Dark Souls does not recover when you sit down at a bonfire. So, we're gonna buy the resident's key and the bottomless box. So we can access, we can manage our inventory from the, um, the bonfire. And it's got some shields. And some arrows. And the chainmail armor. Which is poop. Things are getting treacherous in these parts. A horrible ghost demon has moved in below. And up above, there's that humongous drake and a bull demon too. If you stick around this place, it might end up being your grain. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's funny. Yeah, I'm not here to chit chat. We talk business, or we talk nothing at all. Talk nothing at all. Thank you kindly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it it works. I don't know why they decided they decided to make all the NPCs have that uh, stupid little laugh at the end, but it works. It it works for me. Right. How about you lot? <laughs> if we account for the wind up on my sword, we can do this. Well, unless they get stuck on the terrain like they're off to do. <laughs> too late. <laughs> that was too late on that particular wine up there. And now we're climbing those, uh, that ladder we saw earlier. And we're on the roof. And we can make it across. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Like the lady in the um, intro cutscene said. Right. So, uh, jumping in the first Dark Souls, you have to be running and then you have to let go and quickly hit the uh, dodge slash uh, dash button again. It's stupid, isn't it? But. I still remember. <laughs> Alright, um, Dark Spirit Lilith has invaded. See what I meant about being invaded? See what I meant? <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> Nori sees. Alright. I'm gonna put on my armor, not that it makes a damn difference. Uh, Lilith, whoever they are, just gonna kill me. Hi. <laughs> Can we wave? Yes, we can. <laughs> I wanted to go fight up there, not down here. This is a human player, and if it's one of you, um, ginormous dicks watching the stream right now, screw you. Seriously. <laughs> I've already showed you that I'm not very good at it. <laughs> oh, seriously? Look at how much HP she's got. Oh, damn it. 
<laughs> yes, you win. Kudos to you. <laughs> Dick. And now I'm all the way back. <sighs> in Firelink Shrine. This, this is why you don't go human in this game. Right. <laughs> well, how's that to end the stream on? That's a nice bit of punctuation. Um, yeah. I'll get back to where I was and I'll sit down and have a bit of a rest at that uh, bonfire. And I shall see you all tomorrow for Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Do not forget to join Jordan for his stream on Thursday. And of course, join Ven on Friday for the last Friday of the month, the Friday Night Fubar. Uh, on Saturday, of course, it's Linux Gamecast Weekly. It's the big shoe. <laughs> And, uh, yes, there will be more Dark Souls, and there will be a lot more dying, and a lot more getting invaded. I hope at one point I will get to grips uh, with the game to the point where I'm at least a bit more of a matchup against people like Lilith. Hopefully. <laughs> Alright. Thank you all very, very much for joining me, and I shall see you. Well... I shall see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.